Today, we're checking out Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash number two from Wild Storm Comics and Dynamite Entertainment. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to Comic Again TV, where all geek culture collides. And if you're new to the channel, make sure and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. This is issue number two of the six-part miniseries, Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash from 2007. The story takes place in December 2008, five years after the events of Freddy vs. Jason, and 16 years after the events of Army of Darkness. Ash has arrived at Forest Green, formerly Crystal Lake. Home to the new Super Ultra Mega S-Mart Warehouse Store. Sent here by corporate to clean up the housewares department. On his way into the store, he flirts with the girls he passes in the parking lot, but they all see him as a sugar granddaddy and a joke. But he's only 35. Ash stumbles into the manager of the store, who's already irritated by Ashley's lack of punctuality. They've already wasted seven minutes outside on the consumer tarmac. It's time to get inside and get to work. While the two head inside, the three girls run into Jason Voorhees, who immediately slices one of them in half and smashes the other two skulls together. Ash hears the screams and goes running to help, but he's too late. There's already blood in the snow and death in the air. The cops show up and immediately suspect Ashley, but the manager gives him an alibi. Shortly after this, Ash is in the housewares department reorganizing a pyramid of toasters when he meets a girl he calls Sweet Cheeks but her real name's Carrie. Just like at the end of Army of Darkness, Ash begins telling his story about how he's the chosen one, all about the Necronomicon Ex Mortis and the Deadites. The dumb teenagers working the department with him consider him a joke, even Carrie has a little laugh. Later in the break room, Carrie gets Ash to open up again about everything, but it's a little bit of a ploy so that a couple of teenage pranksters can come in dressed as Jason and scare the crap out of Ash, but it backfires and Ash nearly kills him. Back at Jason's Ramshack. You had your fun with the bubblegum bitches. Now you have to do a favor for daddy. In Jason's mind, where Freddy is still prisoner, a young Jason is sitting on Freddy's lap like father and son. Go, get the Necronomicon, and we'll have a little father-son story time. Just you and me. Get the book for me, Jason, so I can make you smart. But until then, sit your retarded, cancerous, oversized head down here and let me read you a story. I call it, Twas the Nightmare Beyond Elm Street. It's a real holiday killer. <laughs> With that, Jason begins his mission and stumbles upon carolers who are out in the snow preparing for their night of singing door to door. But just as the choir director is about to start them off, Jason stabs one of the carolers from behind with a signpost, and then slaughters the rest of them, removing their heads as brutally as possible. Back in the S-Mart break room, Ash gets seduced by a gorgeous young blonde for his discount, and even manages to get him to pay for all the supplies she and her friends need for their camping trip, all by appealing to little Ashley. But just after Ash loads everything into the car, her friends ditch him and peel out, leaving Ash alone in the parking lot. A combination of stone and wood exterior with a massive bay window and a hardwood door welcome the group. Darkness awaits them as they shut off the Mustang and begin to head inside the house. <laughs> I can't believe you worked that fossil into buying all that equipment for us. What can I say? When you've got tits like mine, you only have to tease a little. And boys will do anything you say if they think they're going to get some. Once inside, the group begin making their way in different directions. One couple begin going at it on the couch in the living room before their friends even leave the room. About that time, two other cars pull up outside. One belongs to Ash Williams, and the other belongs to Carrie. Ash plans on finding the Book of the Dead, the Necronomicon Ex Mortis, made of human flesh and written in blood, able to open the gates of hell and bring the demons in prison there, here to wreak havoc on humans. It can summon the dead and control them, and it can grant limitless power to those who possess it. Necronomicon 101, it's always in the fruit cellar. Sure, it's okay. Ash is down here with the spiders and the ornamental skeletal critters while they're up there having an orgy. Yeah, life's real fair. Stay in school, kids. You too could end up successful like me. 
The kids upstairs are so busy getting their rocks off, they don't even notice a deadly visitor has made his way home. One by one, he brutally slaughters them. He rips one girl in half while he crushes a guy's skull, while Ash is in the basement digging up the book. A scream from upstairs over his head. Jason has found another couple having sex. Just then, the blade of a bloody machete comes through the floorboard, narrowly missing Ash. He pulls his boomstick from his holster and makes his way up the stairs to find dead bodies everywhere. One body laying dead on the floor, another torn in half at the waist, and another still with his head crushed. Ash makes his way to the second floor where he collides with Bree, who's wrapped in a sheet. Dead! All dead! He killed them! Yeah, I see that, but we're not, Ash says as he kisses her passionately while Jason makes his way up the stairs only to be shot by Ash. The two make their way downstairs and outside to the Delta 88. Ash tries to get the car started in a hurry, but it's old and warm blooded. It doesn't want to start right away. <laughs> start, damn it! What did you guys think of issue two of this six part miniseries? We finally got to see Ash up against Jason for the first time, even if it was just a short lead up to the actual fight. I feel that Dynamite and Wildstorm truly captured the personality of Ash. It really seems like it could take place during the Ash vs. the Evil Dead TV series, even though he's a lot older in that TV series. I think they made Jason a lot more brutal than he was in the movies, as I don't really recall ever seeing him actually pull someone apart at the waist or even pull their heads from their bodies. Sorry it's taken so long to get the second part of this series out, guys. It's been a hectic few weeks between Thanksgiving and working through a three-week bronchitis trip. It's been hard getting new videos out lately. Tune in next time, guys, when we take a look at Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash number three from Wildstorm Comics and Dynamite Entertainment.